Another time he went into the synagogue, and there was a man present whose hand was withered. And they were watching him to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath day, hoping for something to charge him with. He said to the man with the withered hand, Get up and stand in the middle. Then he said to them, Is it permitted on the Sabbath day to do good, or to do evil, to save life, or to kill? But they said nothing. Then he looked angrily round at them, grieved to find them so obstinate, and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and began at once to plot with the Herodians against him, discussing how to destroy him. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lakeside, and great crowds from Galilee followed him. From Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumea and Transjordan and the region of Tyre and Sidon, great numbers who had heard of all he was doing came to him. And he asked his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, to keep him from being crushed. For he had cured so many that all who were afflicted in any way were crowding forward to touch him. And the unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, would fall down before him and shout, You are the Son of God. But he warned them strongly not to make him known. He now went up onto the mountain and summoned those he wanted. So they came to him and he appointed twelve, they were to be his companions and to be sent out to proclaim the message, with power to drive out devils. And so he appointed the twelve, Simon to whom he gave the name Peter, James the son of Zebedee and John the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Bonergesar, sons of Thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the zealot and Judas Iscariot, the man who was to betray him. He went home again, and once more such a crowd collected that they could not even have a meal. When his relations heard of this, they set out to take charge of him, they said, he is out of his mind. The scribes who had come down from Jerusalem were saying, Beelzebul is in him, and, it is through the prince of devils that he drives devils out. So he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot last. And if a household is divided against itself, that household can never last. Now if Satan has rebelled against himself and is divided, he cannot last either, it is the end of him. But no one can make his way into a strong man's house and plunder his property unless he has first tied up the strong man. Only then can he plunder his house. In truth I tell you, all human sins will be forgiven, and all the blasphemies ever uttered. But anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, but is guilty of an eternal sin. This was because they were saying, there is an unclean spirit in him. Now his mother and his brothers arrived and, standing outside, sent in a message asking for him. A crowd was sitting round him at the time the message was passed to him, Look, your mother and brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. He replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those sitting in a circle round him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Anyone who does the will of God, that person is my brother and sister and mother.